got the country feeling. Hi, welcome. It's It Takes a Village. I am Bonnie Blomfield. What's in Santa Barbara? Who's in Santa Barbara? What are the resources and what's needed? Today we are delighted. We have our guest, Ellen Reed. Ellen is a book shepherd and she's done some fabulous things. So I'm just delighted to say, Hello, Ellen. Bonnie, thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to be here. Oh, good. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So tell me, what are you up to? What do you do? Well, I, I first of all, I want you to know that I never even knew Santa Barbara existed until I met Dan Pointer, who lives here. Mm -hmm. And he had a book called The Self-Publishing Manual. Mm -hmm. And I met him in L.A. And it was when uh -huh. the digital press first came into being. Uh -huh. And I decided to go to his seminar in Goleta. And people would fly in from all over the world to spend an entire weekend with him. Wow. And I, I used to commute back and forth. And I said, Santa Barbara, oh my God, this place is so beautiful. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea how fabulous it was here yeah. until I did that. Yeah. And uh, over the years, I had a little getaway place here. But in 2012, I moved here full time. Wow. But I would say basically between Dan Pointer and Barbara Gaughan, who's also local, mm -hmm. they, were sell they were talking to people about how to publicize books and how to self-publish books. Mm -hmm. So one day I was at a seminar with Dan and a bunch of people and he said, when you get up and stand in front of people and they try to title their own books and they try to do their own book covers, it's really difficult because they know how to write, but they don't know how to produce. They, and they don't even know how to work with a creative team. He said, why don't you become a book shepherd? I said, what's a book wow. shepherd? What's a book shepherd? <laughs> well, it's the ability to take someone's manuscript for poetry and to look at it, read it, understand what the meaning is behind it, who the audience could be for it, mm -hmm. and how to create titles and subtitles. I have a copywriter I work with and how to create the interior and have it printed. And even t in today's world, you can print on demand with CreateSpace, but you can also print with a traditional printer mm -hmm. and have uh, one or two or 300 books. And the books wow. can look as good as, hopefully working with me, as <laughs> Random House, because it's true that you do judge a book by its cover. Well, fabulous. So, I've seen some of your books and they're beautiful, beautiful, oh, thank you. beautiful. Is there a printer in Santa Barbara, or do you no. send away? Okay. No. Um, price, it's, probably. It's, it's price, but these are not print. Well, for example, there's a printer in Santa Barbara who does the business cards. I really like them B2B, mm -hmm. and they do beautiful things. When you look at my card, there's some, mm -hmm. some, there's some gold. Uh -huh. It's like a gold foil, because yes. I like everything to be excellent. Yes. Excellence is my mantra, pretty much. That <laughs> sounds I, good. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, I'm an expert on excellence, and I think if you're going to sell for indie publish, mm -hmm. you should give yourself a fighting chance. Mm -hmm. So, should I talk? I, I want to talk about Gloria Kay's book. Oh, it's okay please, with you. please. So, Gloria Kay's a local healer here in town. She's been here years and years and years. And I met her at, at, a, at a networking event, and she had a book that she had done a long time ago called Is There a Healer in the House? And I met with Gloria, and she said, You know, I need a new book. And she worked on this book on the interior, on the mm -hmm. on the writing of the book. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, because I know we don't have all day, <laughs> this is the new book. It's called Healer's Hands, Healer's Heart, which wow. is different than Is There a Healer in the House? And what Very. we did is we created a tagline so that people know in-depth insights, practical techniques, and inspiring stories of success with non-traditional healing. So people don't think she's woo woo. Well, she is, right. but she because she works with doctors too, and sure. she does hands-on healing. And then we got a beautiful new picture of her on the cover, and she has a whole new career now. I saw her the other day. <laughs> she's out there. She's speaking. She's doing a lot of wonderful things. And and one of the things that we do for people too is a great tagline. And the reason we do that is because on Amazon. It's really hard for people to see a back cover. You know, you see the front cover and then mm -hmm. a few inside of the book. So we do hope for those who need healing, inspiration for those who would heal, mm -hmm. and then some copy that goes around with that. So so the tagline is kind of that main line on the back yeah. of the book. Well, it's also underneath the book. Let's uh -huh. see. Um, this is a book I did for a woman who was in the foster care system in Cleveland. Because mm -hmm. my clients are all over the world. Wow. And they find me. And I've been doing this 15 years. Oh, long time. Oh, incredible. Yeah. And she had a, it was a terrible tragedy about a little boy 
who was murdered in foster care. And yeah. it was going to be called the Marcus Faisal story. And I said, no, who, who yeah. knows who Marcus Faisal is? So we came up with the title Invisible Kids. But wow. here's the beautiful part. The back of it says, who weeps for the children? That's the kind of, that's the kind of beautiful. work yeah. that I do for books. And just recently, I woke up one day and I said, you know, I, there are a lot of people here in Santa Barbara that don't have books. And there are probably a lot of people in Santa Barbara that have businesses. And they probably don't know how to do the all-important positioning of their businesses. Mm -hmm. So why don't I start a new division of my company to help people with taglines and copy for a car dealership or, um, I don't know, a car, airs repairs, a car repair shop, yeah. whatever it is, right. if they want me. And the sure. thing is, I don't know if they're going to want me or not, but some people have already found me, uh -huh. and I'm happy to do that. Great. I, I, I didn't to do know that. that, that you I were know. doing that. I just started it. It's called... Well, you're so energetic, and yeah. you're so careful with everything, and you would be the go-to person for that. Well, I love what I do. I yeah. love it. I yeah. really want to help people. That's mm -hmm. why I started this business in the first place. You mm -hmm. know, the idea here, and I belong to the Association of Women in Communications here, mm -hmm. which is a great group of writers. I belong to Fred... Klein and a bunch of writers, and I always have a Thursday lunch. I did a book for Barnaby Conrad. Wow. Um, he was responsible. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he, it was uh, That's called impressive. The Death of Monolette. It was uh -huh. a reprint of a 1953 book that, wow. that he had sold thousands of copies. And, Neat. Um, I love wow. this community so much. I feel yeah. so at home here. And I started uh, three book contests, and one of, them, one of them is called the USA Regional Excellence Book Awards. <clears throat> We're in our second year, and Erin DeGraffy, Erin Graffy de Garcia submitted. She's local. Mm. I thought the reason I did that contest mm -hmm. is because I love it here so much. I really thought it would be wonderful to have a contest of people who love where they are right. and have books about a region or set in a region, yeah. whatever it yeah. is. And so she has, and she and, and Neil mm -hmm. has a book too, but he didn't submit to the contest. But. This Be is careful, the Chamber of Commerce is going <laughs> to hire you. Oh, I, I completely I, share I, this I would love it. Yes. I love it here. Yeah. I love it. I, I, I grew up in Beverly Hills. I mm -hmm. moved to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and then I moved to Chicago, got married again, and had a boy. <laughs> and when he grew up, I came back to L.A., and that's when I found Santa Barbara, and now I yeah. know I'm home. Wow. Home. What a nice way to find it through your mission and your calling and this you, seminar. Thank you. you I know that's what? beautiful. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because I was flailing around. I used to own an ad agency in Chicago. Uh -huh. um, my family's in movies, uh -huh. and so I was involved in the book, in the movie industry, uh -huh. in distribution. Uh -huh. and you know how important that is if you have a trailer, for example. The trouble with trailers for books, though, not to digress, <laughs> is that there's no film. So you can't really pull, for a trailer for movies, you can pull the film and you can make a nice trailer and that'll mm -hmm. entice people. Mm -hmm. We have websites, that's the best we can do. And mm -hmm. we can do a little video, but we actually have to use screenshots and some voiceover. And I'm still looking for someone who can do a, a trailer inexpensively really? for authors because we need it. You know, in today's world, internet is king. Uh -huh. We know that. Uh -huh. And we want to let people know who we are, what our book's about, how they can find us, and give them a little taste. You know, San, uh, TV Santa Barbara has some incredibly talented people. I know, people. I was planning on meeting you them. Know, they have yeah. these amazing awards, and you don't you know, hear for two weeks after they've been working with you who you're working with. It's really fun. You really, um, we could talk with Matt about who's down there. Oh, I would love that. that I would would and great. I've been on French show. Client. Yeah, uh, and my and my, some of my clients have been too. Uh -huh, so that's uh -huh. really it's really been fun. I love TV. He's yesterday. so he's so serious, and he knows so many people. And Lisa Angle is kind of his producer editor. Yes, that I works know. with him. They're fun. A lot of fun. Wow. So I did a book for okay. Jeremy Gold. Let me show you this one. Am I talking too much? You no, want to no. I mean, this is a talk show. <laughs> Doing <I> good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy and his wife Calla live in Carp, uh -huh. but um, they're always here, and mm -hmm. Calla's in the jewelry business. I bought their earrings from her, beautiful. beautiful. And one day they asked me to do a little talk at the university club. I love to talk, <laughs> and I love to talk about what I do and how I can mm -hmm. help people. And she said, I want you to meet my husband. He's had these manuscripts for a long time and mm -hmm. hasn't done anything with them. So ah, uh, perfect. they hired me person. for this book. and. It's a murder mystery set in Carpinteria, Carp High, ah. and it's called Death at Carp High. And 
what I did with this book, and uh, this isn't it, but basically we had a regular printer work on it, not digital, and this is all embossed in the final version. Wow. And you can, when you, it's like if you go to the bookstore and you hold it, you can run your hands over it. Oh, neat. I picked this one up, and obviously it's not it, but we had uh -huh. a really fabulous cover designer work on this book. The book's terrific. That's so local, Carpinteria. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so that was really good. And then wow. this is Abrisha, and uh -huh. she's been local, but she just moved. And she has a wonderful book. It's called The Spiral of Creativity. I see her on Facebook. She's going great guns with this because she's speaking all over the country and mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. And she has a book that befits her. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that's the key to, in my opinion, the book business when you can't get a random house deal. And not only that, don't want one. Mm -hmm. And we don't even need them anymore. I mean, it'd be great to have them, but then if you start your own publishing imprint, like you have, mm -hmm. I noticed with your book, right. then you don't have to pay anybody else a percentage. I was going to say, the money is a big difference. Yeah, big, it's a big, big difference. And it's, I think, very important to pay the artist, and that applies, you know, to authors, to musicians. Um, they are the creators of the art, and I really feel they should get the money. Right. But that's just me. Well, it is true. If, yeah. you, so if you indie publish, you mm -hmm. start your own imprint, you will get the money. Yeah. You'll have to pay a distributor to get you into Ingram or Baker and Taylor, mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble dot com and all mm -hmm. those other places. Wow. If you don't have the luxury of a you know, big deal yeah. publisher. Yeah. So many people, I read somewhere there were 300,000 books printed last year. 300,000. Wow. It's an That's amazing. And how do you make your book stand up? That's why Facebook is important. The mm -hmm. website, the copy. That's why I started the Read Creative Group, mm -hmm. because I don't have to be the book shepherd. I can, my people and I can help people position themselves in a way mm -hmm. so that people will get it right away because we're so fast mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. We don't have mm -hmm. to want to wade through big long descriptions, understand right away, this is what I do and this is why we'd love to the hear The attention from you. Yeah. span of us all might play into that a bit. You know, it's just amazing. You're so knowledgeable, but you know, I think it's so important the idea of you know, sincerely really wanting to help another person, you know, you just can't fool people about that. You feel it. And, you know, that's really delightful. Thank I mean, you. I think that's such an addition to our city. You know, oh, that yeah. kind of sincerity and offering and like you said, I don't particularly like the word network, but, it, you know, getting to be together with so many people and contact. Um, I just think that's really admirable. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I wanted to be part of the community. I live here. Yeah. I plan to live here yeah. forever. And uh, I want to uh, participate in as many things as I can. Yeah. And so I like to be invited to things. And yeah. I go to everything. I went to the TVSB. That was event, so fun. And that was so yes. much fun. Oh, speaking of that, I would like to show that, uh, just for one minute, it takes a village got an award. Great. Congratulations. Here we go. Yay, it takes a village program. And that is for contact, content, showing resources in Santa Barbara. And it's so important, Access TV, for free expression. This is, you know, the heart of democracy. Very, very important. I'm starting to do an ad for TVSB. I love it too. I love it. And well. know that you can have a program. Come down, talk to Matt, talk to um, Mark, and um, you will really be supported. Um, so anyhow, again, I'm so delighted that Ellen made the time to come see Is us. Is it over now already? That was fast. No, we're not even <laughs> no, not close to well, over. I, and the, I like Patricia DiOrio's show, Get Conscious Now. Cause yeah, that's a great one. She, I, she has... Deepak Chopra and yeah. all these very, very famous people on her show are amazing. Right, right. I really enjoy it. Yeah. I really, really do it. Other people, yeah. TVSB is um, something I try to watch all the time, yeah. which is it's great. It's fun. So it's let's see, what, fun. I, what else? Oh, Did you want to ask me anything else? I, um, um, let's see. I have my I've own book. Let's hear about your own book. Well, it's Where called, is it? It's here. Oh, it's there it is. It's called Putting Your Best Book Forward. Oh, how cute. A Book Shepherd's Secrets on producing award-winning books that sell. And that's why this is the Hollywood type information of what, what good is it having a great film if nobody wants to watch it? Mm -hmm. And how do you make that happen? Mm -hmm. So first you have to have a great product, mm -hmm. whether it's a, a film or a book or whatever it is. Right. And then you have to position it in such a way that you do it right. In this book, for example, I have pictures of some of the books I've done, sorry, 
the covers are really critical. As everybody says, you know, yeah, yeah. you do judge a book by its cover. And, um, mm -hmm. and the internet is key, like the mm -hmm. website and all mm -hmm. the rest of that stuff. This is a book, I'm, I'm going to do a second book. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle like of it. writing it right now. This won an award, this won an award, this won an award. And I feel so grateful that the books that I work on do win awards. So that's really well, thrilling. obviously, someone has some really great creative choices going on um, because your covers are absolutely stunning and beautiful. Thank you. We've got about five left, and I thought I'd read a poem for us if we like. And the title is Come and Go. She's here. She's not. Originally, it's a gift. A gift so full-blown you do not notice it. It is the world. It is not she and I, but the beautiful blue sky, the smell of the flowers. The horse stomps its hoofs, sending hay and the smell of life to and fro. The smell of the sweat on the horse's back is there. The horse is illuminated. Walk him, brush him, let the hose run the water over him. Romany ride. No, you cannot roll in the dirt. I see you, I hear you, I feel you, I know you. She was always there, unseen, like the light of the projector screen. Unseen, she illuminated the courage to see. Love, smell, chase the world. The butterfly floats down to elusively flee our gasp. She is always there. The shining iridescent deep blue is seen when she's at our back. Baby, go, go, adult, yahoo, singular, hello, crowd, wahoo, unified in silence. Together we see, we feel. Yes, we shared her, but she knew how to be just mine. It is a kind of giving. They say she's gone, gone, transformed, but remains in visions, memory, lines of poetry. But I can't give her up to all these pieces. She is all total. For the good and bad, she is a song in my heart. The words, the melody, the rhymes, the visions change as a kaleidoscope. I always want it all whole her. Face it, march away. Don't look back over your shoulder. She is gone. Visions, be soft on my heart. She comes and goes. She comes and goes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And is it a book? Let's see the cover. This is the cover. I need to And help you her. know what, Ellen? I <laughs> really want to knock on your door. <laughs> I can help you. I, I thought I wanted to knock on the door before I invited you. Now I really <laughs> want to have you help My me. Pleasure. Yes. My pleasure. Yes. And remember, with It Takes a Village, Santa Barbara, we have fabulous resources. Yes. But also, every night, there are children in Santa Barbara that go to bed hungry. So, let's help. It Takes a Village. It's your village. Good morning. Welcome to Michael Matters. It's a segment of our show, which I'm a producer of, called It Takes a Village. My name is Michael Shiflett, and I'm going to chat with you for a while today about a few things. One of them is kind of a topic that's uh, near and dear to me and hopefully to the rest of you. For one thing, what are the economic conditions in Santa Barbara in regard to jobs, wages, and rent? I think this is particularly important and relevant right now. In terms of rent, uh, the rents have become out of control. We need rent control very badly. Um, one to two thousand dollars per place, even if it's just one room. I'm sorry, that doesn't work. It doesn't work for most people in this community. We have to make sure that our economy doesn't just continue to favor tourists and the upper one or two percent because those people are already taken care of. What we need to do is make sure that rent is uh, absolutely affordable, that life in general is affordable for, for people, and that landlords don't just absolutely destroy every paycheck you have. And you can't even get into an apartment without first and last month, so we're talking at least six thousand four thousand to six thousand dollars to get into an apartment or just a room and on top of that you're told that you can't even have any pets there seems to be an anti-pet policy in Santa Barbara now that didn't used to exist um, most people have pets 
I think the average person probably does have cats and dogs and whatnot, and they, they deserve a place to live and so do their animals. Um, you can't be just forced into the street because you're not wealthy or a tourist or you have a pet. Another aspect of this is wages. Wages have apparently not really kept up with the cost of living in at least 40, maybe 50 years in our society, and that's also had a very negative effect on the economy. When you're paid this much to live and it costs this, this much, that just absolutely doesn't work on the face of it. Um, any economic system, including capitalism, by the way, needs to be regulated. Um, in the 1980s, there was a lot of deregulation. I think the byword of the new age, we have to re-regulate and make sure that people are being paid a living wage um, that's uh, relevant to the economy we live in. It's just insane. I don't think other countries like Western Europe and Canada and Australia do this to their citizens. I think that uh, the American people in general have been very complacent and we need to demand that rents are under control and that we have wages that can keep up with the cost of living. It's not an outrage to, to suggest such a thing. And jobs. Jobs are a real problem. A lot of them were probably imported out of the country a long time ago, um, but I won't get overly political here. Um, there's not enough opportunity. I'm lucky because I have a job that I like, uh, and I believe me though, I've uh, I've been through a lot of jobs that were just horribly low paying and uh, were just labor almost. There's no opportunity here. Uh, unless you're a, a lawyer or a doctor or something corporate, I think that people that aren't necessarily degreed professionals also deserve a chance to have an economic life and it's undeniable and something really needs to be done about this so in in future segments we're going to be dealing more in depth with these and other topics rather than skating on top of the issue what's happening with friends of it takes a village in Santa Barbara um, for one thing there's a great book out that I can really recommend. I think it's an important and really good read. It's called Up Against the Wall by Edward Casey and Mary Watkins. And it's about what's happening with the uh, United States and Mexican border issue, which is another problem that's not going to go away, clearly. Uh, and we need some sane solutions to that problem, too. Thank you. I'm Michael Shiflett from Michael Matters which, as you know, is a little sub-segment of It Takes a Village. And remember, Santa Barbara matters, you matter, and we need to vote in our own best interests. And remember that Santa Barbara is your village. Take it back. Hi, I'm Bonnie from It Takes a Village. We're here on Ortega and Santa Barbara Street. What have we discovered? It's a Steve Nipper company. Let's go in and check it out. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Bonnie. I'm great. Thanks for stopping in today. All right. What's going on around here? Well, we're here at Soul Wave, where we make people's water better. All right. And I'll say that you have a pretty good reputation in this town. How did you earn that? Well, with 23 years of service to the community and doing a good job and standing behind what we do, that's what we've earned. That's and, what I've earned. Yeah. And I just want to thank you, Bonnie, for helping us support It Takes a Village. We couldn't be happier. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. And so we learn more about Santa Barbara. We have a company that helps the economy of people because of their prices. And they help your good health with good water. Very, very important. Thank you. Steve Nipper at Soul Wave. Hi, I'm Chris Jensen from Jensen Guitar and Music Company, and I'm proud to sponsor It Takes a Village. And just so you know where we are, here's my card. It's 
started out one Saturday night at the Condor. You told me you didn't love me anymore. We started picking up the pace, then much to our disgrace, the bartender said, we all kindly lead. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. I'm thanking God that I'm over you. We went on over to your mom's trailer condo. Pretty soon a coffee table flew. Well, the neighbors, they called the cops. They made it stop. And then your dog bit off my shoe. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. Ha, ha, yeah, yes, I'm over you. And I'm thanking God that I'm over you.